Welcome to Thursday Night Knives. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco, and tonight we're going to talk all about traditional knives. Um, it was kind of on the docket for last week uh, when we talked about fixed blades, but uh, I naively charged into that discussion thinking we could cover uh, both. But it's being such, uh, you know, uh, matters of gravity, we couldn't uh, we couldn't get off the fixed blade topic uh, to get to traditionals last week quick enough. So, uh, and uh, and I tuckered out quite frankly because uh, I went on a on, on a a great big long hike the next day, which was pretty pretty cool. Uh, but today, uh, I I actually put out a video about my traditional knife collection that I recorded last night, and uh, it's gotten. Uh, you know, uh, uh, people like it. They've commented on it so far. They like the collection. They like the video itself. I think uh, like others, I mean, I myself love collection videos and I love sub collection videos. Um, Jeff Cutlery Lover is excellent at that. He's got a million little sub collections, Bally songs, uh, trappers, you know, this and that, lighters. Um, and uh, sometimes he'll just do little videos about those little sub collections. And I like to do that too. For instance, uh, coming up, I'd like to do all my worn cliffs, you know, across, across the spectrum, uh, like I did right here with, uh, with the traditionals. And, uh, I also would like to do bowies and recurves and all that kind of thing. So let me know if you like the sub collection videos and, uh, yeah, well, I'll keep them coming. Uh, especially when I'm inspired late night as I was last night. Um, so now is your pocket check. If you are there and you are watching, let me know what you were carrying today and I will let you know at length what I was carrying today because uh, um, because I'm very, very happy about it. Uh, it's a new acquisition, but uh, first I'll tell you what else I was carrying. Uh, today I was carrying this uh, Microtech um, Troodon. This is the, the little one that I bought thinking it was the big one and was very disappointed, but now I'm very happy. G-Man, what's up? And uh, I love that fully serrated top edge. Hey, Caleb, nice to have you, sir. Missed last, last week, but glad to be at this one. Well, last week, we I promised to get to traditionals, didn't get to them, so we're going to do them tonight. This is a very untraditional knife. Uh, I was carrying this today. Tier 1, nice to have you here, sir. Um, I was also carrying my little uh, Ed Calderon-inspired Victorinox fruit knife in the sheath I made for it in my pocket. Very light. Uh, Dave, great to have you here, sir. Nice videos you've been putting out lately. Check out this old Sword Blade Reviews. He's uh, It's a new channel, but Dave's been in the knife game forever, and uh, he's making some awesome videos now about his collection. Ryan, happy Thursday Night Knives. Great to have you here, sir. Hello, Kane. Cheers. Uh, since you have two touching glasses, I will touch glasses with you. Blade Ogre. Hello, sir. And Chad, nice to have you, sir. So the other knife I was carrying today was the knife that I received in a trade plus a little cash uh, for my Medford um, Slim Midi. Yes, Alex uh, gave me a great deal on that. Um, but I also got a great deal on another knife in that trade. And that other knife means a lot more to me. So I can remember that trade with Alex by holding on to that other knife. That's the Emerson Iron Dragon. I got rid of the Slim Midi because someone dangled this in front of my face. Uh, a TRM Adam, brand new in box. Plains Crafter, nice to have you. Happy Thursday to you. Uh, so TRM Adam, something I've been wanting for a long time uh, and uh, just kind of ha hasn't worked out. And geez, man, I interviewed uh, Marianne and I had her on the show on the on the uh, town hall a couple of times and I, I was starting to feel guilty. It's like next time she comes on, I have to have had one of her knives. And uh, this Adam is is man, uh, I really, I really get it. I get why people are so nuts about it. Straight out of the box uh, on phosphor washers, uh, phosphor bronze washers. It is just so smooth. That blade stock is just really thin and that full flat grind or nearly full flat grind is just, it's outstanding. This is, I, I have to say, this is my uh, case canoe in your bug out today, nice. I, I do love the bug out, but man, I'm a sucker for the case canoe. And we all know that, uh, that Jim likes his canoe too. Newly modded Tropin by BJ Hill. Tropin. Trying to think of what that is. 
Oh, oh, the Tropin, the Tropin, uh, the Spider Co. Yeah. Oh, that's cool with the with the wave and the yeah, that's cool. The flipper and the compression lock. Um, so this the TRM Adam. My God, if you don't have one, I know I'm late to the party. This is me. This was this was me in 1990, whatever four when Kurt Cobain killed himself. I'm like, hey, you hear this uh, this band Nirvana? They're really awesome. You should check them out. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I'm I'm always a little bit late to the party. Have always been a a late bloomer and. Uh, but I'll tell you, having this, I am so excited. I also am very excited by not only how this can make right angle turns in super thin cellophane. I mean, like, and then you have a perfect without any tug or any weirdness or wrinkling. Uh, but I'm very excited to get new scales for this. Uh, not that I don't love the green canvas micarta scales that it shipped with. But uh, hey, why not have uh, a bunch of scales? That's the whole point of this and a lot of their knives, right? I mean, besides how freaking awesome they are, uh, you can kind of uh, make them your own and they have a lot of different scale options. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm thinking purple, uh, if I can get, they're not purple, uh, like wine colored micarta would be cool. Hey James, how you, how you doing? In the words of Howard Bourne, <laughs> hi Bob. I don't get that. I don't get that, explain please. Cause I don't like to chuckle and then really not know what I'm chuckling at was being chased by Hurricane Laura last week. Glad to be back. Hey, glad to have you back, sir. And I know um, uh, we're some other friends. Jimmy Slash was saying he was down there close to it, and it went right by him. Uh, everyone who's been down there uh, and is from there and lives down there, I hope I hope you're all recovering well. And, uh, you know, my, my heart goes out to you if you're not. Spiderco Caribbean Sheepfoot. Oh, yeah, that's cool. With the, with the yellow handle and a GEC 23 liner lock in Woodland Micarta. Hmm, 23. I'm not sure what the 23 looks like. I think it's kind of looks maybe like the 74. Uh, uh, oh, geez. That's obnoxious. I don't even know if I know what the 74 looks like. I carried my Asher Knives Classic and Silva today. Okay, Asher Knives. Someone fill me in. Are they awesome? I mean, this is a, a, a company that's just uh, just appearing on my radar lately, along with like American Blade Works. Uh, they're brand new to me too. Um, tell me about them. Are they good? I, I haven't experienced them yet. If anyone has one that they'd like to loan, I'd take it. Hold on to it for a week and send it back to you. I promise. Hello, hello, fellow knifers. KT32. I like your little logo. Ryan, anyone get one of the new Best Tech Rogers slut that just dropped? If so, trying desperately to find one if anyone is selling. Hmm. What is that? Okay, so is that a so that's a Rogers design slut. I'm not sure what that what that looks like, but I'm guessing S L U T is like something light utility tool, um, something like that, right? It's not an actual. Uh, so tier one says love the atom. Me too. Oh my god, perfect. A three and a half inch blade. So I, and by the way, I love the angle the blade takes to the handle. It's ready for work. It's it, you know. Kind of dives down there a little bit, reaches the uh, reaches the thing before your knuckles. TRM's about ten minutes from my house, waiting for all this crap to blow over so I can go over there and pick up my knife in person. That's awesome. My sister, by the way, lives up in that in that area code four one three. Such cool people there. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Um, yeah, twenty CV steel. I mean, I can't imagine ever having to actually sharpen this. Uh, just beautifully done, man. Beautifully done, men and women. Okay, Max, the atom is harder to come by than hen's teeth. Yeah, you know what? That's that's actually that's actually very true. I mean, I've been looking for it, and and uh, Marianne suggested I call uh, someone and ask for one. Just call the company and ask for one. I was like, I'm not going to do that. Uh, they're hard enough to 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 keep in in uh in stock to sell there and they're not in the business to give away knives carried the mayo covert in stellite 6k today that's awesome i'm i can't remember which one exactly uh the covert is but all your mayos that we've seen so far absolutely gorgeous uh if you have a grail call for today ryan please please drop it Savivi picaro that's the one with the big giant uh, uh hole in the blade i think with the is that the one with the floating thumb stud? That's so cool looking. And the Boker Black Widow Hawkbill Kalishnikov. Right on. That sounds cool. Black Widow, that must be all blacked out. 0470 today. Uh, 
or 70. Is that that's the Emerson, right? And Lion Steel Dom tomorrow. Wait, wait, what's the 470? Can't remember which one the 470 is. See, that's the problem with the numbers from the bottom. Oh, no, it's not before my time, James. It's not before my time. I remember Bob, the Bob Newhart show. My best friend used to watch it uh, when we were in like middle school. I gave up on trying to buy the Adam. Seems almost impossible. I think, Chad, it's going to be uh, uh, a, a uh, an attrition kind of thing. Like after a while, they're, they're, they just will have made enough uh that and and they will be just out of vogue enough that you'll you'll start to find them i promise 23 is a jumbo trapper Ooh, that sounds good now when you say jumbo i'm wondering is it jumboer than like the classic uh uh regular size case trapper i i am a sucker for the trapper my gec uh trapper well i have the gec since we're talking about traditional knives I have the GEC Improved Trapper in this green pickle, which is just, let me see if I can get a little more light on this. I love the color of this. Uh, that's not, eh, that doesn't really work, but it's this nice uh, green pickle kind of color. Love it. Uh, jig bone, of course. And then uh, it's called the Improved Trapper, I believe because they take the spay off and give you a worn clip. Now, I'm a big fan of the spay blade, especially as someone who uses his traditional knives for food mostly. Um, I find that, uh, well, if we go out to dinner, we haven't done that in a while, but uh, when we go out to dinner, I always take a, a knife for my meat. And because uh, I, I know you've heard me say it a million times, but I am not going to be the person who grasps onto that wet wooden handle with the loose blade you know, with the with the with the shallow tang and the loose rivets, and then tries to saw this expensive cut of meat, uh, you know, with a dull blade. It's not going to be me. It's not going to happen. Kane, I was carrying my Adam as well. Oh, nice, nice. Great minds thinking alike. And my newest acquisition, a custom Pena Lanny's clip front flipper. Oh, drool city, man. The latter is my early birthday gift to myself. I like to hear that, Kane. You know. You spend every day in your skin. You deserve to get yourself a gift. That's my justification around birthday time. I'm like, you know, I gotta, I gotta put up with myself all the time. I deserve this. Uh, this year it was my A2D. I deserve it. Uh, but anyway, uh, we were talking about the spay blade, and I believe that it is an excellent, excellent food knife. You can both spread with it and cut with it. Uh, K30, KT32 Spider Copera Three, which I kind of need to get in my hands. Never had one. Uh, at Blue Chef. Not sure what that means. Uh, hey, Matthew, how you doing? I love Thursdays too, man. Uh, Friday, Saturday, that's amateur night. Thursday is is the weekend. It's the start of the weekend. Anyway, slept. Slim Utility, of course. His custom version can go for over four grand. Jeez, oh, Pete, man. Four grand. That's rarefied air. Look at that. So this is uh, a... GEC 15, uh, you saw this in the video. I, I think I talked about it extensively. I, I love this knife and I love that handle. God, it's just beautiful to me. It really does look like autumn. Um, and so they patina up nicely, but the uh, this, this is a great blade. And in the improved trapper, they decided this was an improvement and it is cool, don't get me wrong. Love their uh, worn clips, but I'm I'm curious. Uh, did did they have to put a qualifier on it? Like this is better than the other kind. Couldn't they just call it another kind of trapper? Trapper two, trapper W for Warncliffe. That's neither here nor there. But uh, I don't know about improved. It's just another trapper. Chad says I carried the copper dogma. Oh, I love the dogma. Uh, I have it close at hand, actually. Civivi Mini Bull Mastiff. That's a cool, that's uh, that's the cleavery blade and some kind of night morning Tucson Proto. That's cool. I see now that you can get Tucson on Amazon. That's kind of new, right? Ryan says, Spirited Whiskey says, Spirited Blades says, I have two new grails coming this week in time for next week's Thursday Night Knives podcast. Then another will come for the following week. Jeez, man. Things are... Uh, Things are drying up for you, huh? Just kidding. 
oh crap, I do have a grail call this week to show you. Well, excellent, man. I look forward to it. And and when you do, since we're talking about traditionals, please bring uh, your Jared Oser and some of, some of your uh, recent, I know you've had a couple of traditionals recently. Just bring those along. Great patina on that 15Y. Thank you, sir. Uh, I, it's all done with food, you know? A couple of times uh, cutting some steak with that and boom, it's uh, nice. And then you get sick of it, you can polish it off, but I can never get it totally shiny uh, without putting some serious work into it. And then you get a sort of cloudy kind of ghostly polish, which is kind of neat. James says, closest I have to, tra to traditionals is my Pena Trapper, but it's a front flipper with CF scales and no shield. Semi-traditional? I'd say so. Does it lock? I don't know. To me, Everything you just set up there, if it locks, I'd say you've gone past traditional. Just You're just calling it a trapper, but it's not, you know, it, it, it's approximating a modern. Uh, uh, so I would say mm, if it doesn't lock, not traditional at all. If it does lock, yeah, modern traditional. That's just me. GEC 23 liner lock is about, oh, damn, 8.25 overall, 4.5 inch single bladed version. If, if Jim uh, feels enterprising at any point, maybe he can look up a GEC 23 liner lock. That'd be cool to see because it's, but it's so, uh, wait, uh, go back to that last one, please, Jim, if you don't mind. So Scott, is that the kind of liner lock that you see on traditionals where it's kind of a, a, a hump, you know, like it, it, the lock itself doesn't, doesn't uh, fit in the lines of the knife, but it kind of bumps up. Curious to know that. That's kind of a traditional thing that you see traditional knife companies like Case and Queen, and I, I do believe uh, GEC has done that before. And to me, that's one of those things that if you're going to stick to a very traditional design, fine, leave that in there. But I mean, the idea behind the liner lock has so improved since then that seems like uh, seems like it's time for that to move on. Oh, there you go, Jim. Thank you, sir. Now that's that's what I was thinking. It's a nice looking knife, but that's that's bigger than I was thinking, though. And that uh, that liner lock does not look as obtrusive as I was imagining, but still, that's right where most knives have a little choil, have the opposite. You know, that's a they have an indent there, not a an out dent. So uh, beautiful. I love the shield. Collector knives. Hey, collector knives. Excellent to have you. Improved trapper from the improved muskrat back forty years ago where a clip was replaced with a worn cliff. Excellent. Thank you, sir. And as a matter of fact, uh, I believe I bought this from you. Fine, fine people, collector knives. I love them. So he was referring to this. Uh, Jim, would you mind going back to collector knives for a second? I just want to uh, improve Trapper from the improved muskrat back. So is so if you don't mind, is the muskrat, Are you ref is that referring to the clip point blade? Curious, where the clip was replaced with the worn cliff. Okay, well, I'll, I'll get I'll get a little more clarification, but it's it's uh, it's great to have you here, sir. Uh, what is uh, what did you have next there, Jim? Improved trapper, improved muskrat back forty years ago. All right, all right, that I'm gonna have to come back to. Bob, I need to see that gunstock traditional again. Your birthday knife on forty seven. All right. Funny, you should ask. Here it is. So, okay, do any of you people, uh, any of you people, that's what my grandfather used to say. We'd come to visit them up in Pearl River, New York, and he'd say, hey, nice to see you. When are you people going home? And he wasn't trying to kick us out, but he, he wanted to know, like, what the scope of the whole project was. Nice to see you, Bobby. When, when are you people going home? So anyway, do any of you all out there carry these little uh, pocket sheets? I love them in theory, but it's kind of like wearing... Um, those thigh pads, you know, and football pants or something. Um, but this is the GEC, was it the 44 Gunstock? It is the, yeah, the 44. This is a beauty. I guess I don't need to do that. But this is Gabon Ebony. And it has a very, very impressive pen, um, pen, pen blade. I, I find that, uh, you know, usually they're short, shorter, A, and B, like, it seems like less attention is paid to the pen blades. 
uh, at least on the on the case knives I have, and I don't have too many GECs with a pen blade. So this was very uh, a delight and very impressive, and it's super sharp. And PPP, someone tell me, what is it? Uh, pattern prototype, pattern premier prototype, something like that. Uh, but look at this. And listen to this. This is probably the best uh, walk and talk of any of my traditionals, but look at that. What a beautiful, beautifully shaped clip point blade they make. Yeah, so there you go, tier one. I highly, highly recommend it. Lindy Lou, nice to have you. Uh, highly recommend this knife. This is a great one because it's a little, it's a titch bigger than the 15, uh, but it, it still kind of carries the same way. It's, it's pretty much, Pretty much the same, but a little bigger. And I love the 15. Love your skiff interview. Thank you. And props to Jim for picking up the ball and running at the end. Yeah, Jim, if you don't know this about Jim, he is a very, very experienced interviewer himself. And uh, and I got to say, um, well, I've been producing podcasts for him for years, and he is Mr. Smooth. I've seen him uh, talk his way in and out of all sorts of stuff. and uh, And I've also seen him, you know, uh, deal with very unexpected things uh, in the recording studio. So it's uh, it's it's always good to know he's back there. Won a GEC number 93 on eBay and it got lost in the mail. That, okay, that's bologna sausage. Nothing gets lost in the mail. I'm sorry, Lindy Lou. Someone, someone knew what was in that package, I believe. Lost in the mail. Indeed. I'm sorry. I'm getting indignant for you now. Uh, uh, Just Greg says, I've got a double-bladed 23 in Brazilian cherry wood, and it's a brick. <laughs> Feels heavier than the Buck 110. That's funny. Uh, 23. Okay, that's funny because sometimes the some of these just yeah they do feel like bricks to me. Well, I mean it's actually it's a it's a pretty large knife, but the the bull buster to me is is kind of like a brick, and uh, but man, is it is it pleasing? It's just a it's just a great. That's a great knife. Uh, but frankly, it gets very little carry. But I don't want to get rid of it. I just like it too much. Collector knives. Muskrat was the was two Cali clips. But they built one swapping one clip with a Warney decades ago. Okay, I see what you're saying. So GEC swapped the sp spay for the Warney. Okay, gotcha. Oh, that's cool. That's a cool little bit of history. Along the lines of the Pattern Premier production. Okay, Pattern Premier production pattern production premiere probably something like that love it thanks for showing it again oh you're welcome I, i'm not sure if you can i guess i guess a lot of these uh, get get to be a um, secondary market kind of thing i carry that 23 in a hide and drink pocket organizer similar to that yeah for, for something like that for, for something like this you definitely need something like this to keep uh to keep the blade vertical in your pocket, man. There's no bigger buzzkill than really wanting to, to bond with a knife and carry it, but it ends up like this in your pocket all day. Um, so anyone out there like the sod buster? I, I, I am a sucker for the sod buster. Here it is. This is the, the 71 uh, bull nose. Okay. With beautiful natural canvas tan micarta love that and then i have the uh it's corollary in case and then the large ones corollary in case also this is the dedicated muffin knife uh yes that's right uh k3 yes it does lost or stolen i've recently had a package worth 700 dollars just disappear i'm not liking usps i am very sorry to hear that both of you because just today you know i go to the post office a lot and um just today i was reflecting on 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 my good fortune in that realm of things, but I don't want to get more specific because I don't want to have to knock on wood and show that I'm superstitious. But yeah, I, I okay. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, man. And and Lindy, I, I hope uh, I hope the packages arrive someday when you're just not expecting it. You think it's totally gone, and then boom, it shows up. And you're like, there it is. Hello, Ryan. How you doing, sir? Awesome. How are you? I'm Happy doing great. Thursday night knives. Happy Thursday night knives to you, sir. Yeah. So, um, uh, 
So I won't take much of your time tonight, only, you know, a few minutes, but I wanted to pop on just to show off. I did I, earlier, I mentioned that I've got you know, two grills that are going to be coming um, in the next week. One lands tomorrow. The other one lands on Tuesday of next week. Mm -hmm. So I'll be able to show you those on Thursday next week. And then I've got another one that'll be the following week that's coming. All three are extremely exciting. But um, this week I did get a mm. beautiful Parker. Walter. This is a Walter Randolph. Randolph. So I teased that I had something coming with the initials WR. <laughs> uh, this is White Timascus um, as a, a, on both sides um, with a zirconium um, 3D milled clip. He does really cool standoffs that keep the height off your pocket perfect. Uh, Zerk floating, zirconium floating backspacer, zirconium pivot collar on there, uh, as well as uh, pivot. And then on the uh, same thing, collar and, uh, and, and pivot and Zerk here. Beautiful hand rub. Super, super clean hand rub finish on this thing. Uh, this is in CPM 154, and this is his Tonto blade shape. It's very reminiscent of, he does a lot of collaborations with um, uh, John Barker. Okay, that's what, yeah, right. So this was kind of reminiscent of, he, this is a mini wyvern is the model name, but it's a Tonto version of the mini wyvern. So it's a three and a quarter inch blade. Uh, it's just a perfect little EDC piece. God, that um, that blade yeah. is such a beautiful shape. I would love, I would love to see that whole knife in a sort of field grade version. Um, I, I love the whole profile yeah. of. It. Uh, so I have a couple questions. Um, if you could go wide on him, Jim, uh, and hold it, hold it so that you can see the spine and the clip. Uh, the clip clearance. I'm sorry, just hold it. Yeah, rotate it ninety. So. Uh, my question to you is, what's the philosophy behind, I know some very nice and high-end knives do that, where they float the clip ever so slightly off the scale oh, like that. Oh, yep. Yep. You can see a little gap there. Yeah. What's crazy about it is, you know, usually I'm not a fan of when the clip doesn't actually touch the scale um, because it, it it is too easily, it can come out of the pocket. Mm -hmm. But this is so perfect with the ramping on both sides, and it's it's just it's it's just the right amount that it stands proud of the of the scale right. that it does not unseat or lift out of your pocket without you actually grabbing on and pulling it out. Um, so it, 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 some people get it right. It's one of those things, right? Where, yeah, yeah. You know, like Bob Terzuola invented the 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 thumb disc. Well, I don't like most people's thumb discs. I just don't. I think a lot of them are misplaced. They're not in the right relationship to um, to the pivot, yeah. and and the detent isn't set right for thumb disc. <laughs> but Bob nails it every time, right? And this is one of those examples I think where it's just it's perfect. But to me, it's easy and out of the pocket. It has perfect clearance for the material of your you know yeah. of, your, of your pants or whatever you've got it in, whether it's jeans, but it also works really well in lighter weight materials as well. So if you're wearing slacks, it's a really easy in and out for, for slacks or pantsuits, even if you wanted to you know, wear it that way. But the action is incredible. He uses IKBS uh, bearings in here. It's totally, totally frictionless, super easy access and very easy to disengage uh, the lock bar. Um, the audible sound is fabulous on it and mm -hmm. the detent's wicked. I mean, it, it's just, it's perfectly, perfectly tuned. Uh, very easy to manip manipulate flipper. Right. And let me ask you this, uh, with Timascus, I don't have any knives of Timascus. Yeah. Uh, is, is there any, well, first of all, describe what Timascus is and is there any difference in performance between, uh, what a Timascus, uh, um, line, uh, Timascus frame lock feels like compared to a regular titanium. Any difference? Um, as far as performance, um, to my knowledge, no. Uh, but Timascus can be just like Mokume. Um, it can be made with zirconium. That's called zirkutai, which is ti titanium and zirconium mixed. Mm -hmm. This is white Timascus, which is basically just um, two different, it's basically different iterations of titanium that okay. are um made like damascus okay okay so they react so, differently to anodization and, and that's sorry. exactly right 
Okay. And so it's, it's very similar to making Damascus only with titanium as the material. Uh, this is heat anodized. So, you, you know, that's why, you know, the multicolored, multifaceted kind of look. And does that go away with time? Color. Does that rub off with time or go away with time and friction? Or do you just kind of spray some um, Windex on it and perk it up? Yep. Um, if you hit it with non-emodium Windex um, or rubbing alcohol, the, mm. the, the colors and everything come right back. Your, your oils of your hands mm -hmm. will change the color of it. Mm -hmm. It'll... Um, you know, instead of getting like those deep purples and stuff, um, it, it may dull it a little bit, um, but it, it actually just gives it a different kind of look. So it has its own its own look once you get your finger oils on it. Um, but it looks just as good, in my opinion. Like you know, I could rub my fingers on there, and it will change kind of the, the look of it a little bit. You can kind of see where I rubbed. There's right here. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't. You can't quite see that like gold. These like gold spots as much. But um, yeah, this is called white timascus. There's also black timascus, and they have very different looks to them. This being a little bit brighter, picks up brighter blue hues. Uh, the purples are a little lighter in color, and it has like these, you know, bronzy kind of in between colors. Um, black titanium will have very different color iterations than this. Um, so very cool. But yeah, zir zircuta is really cool, where they use zir zirconium and titanium together and make Damascus out of it. So if you're, if you're new to this show, um, Ryan is a collect lavender pants. Good to have you, sir. Uh, uh, Ryan is a connoisseur and I, I don't, I'm not using that term, uh, in any way, ironically or lightly. He is a connoisseur of fine, uh, custom made knives and, uh, and you carry them, right? I mean, you carry and use them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I do. Um, virtually everything. In fact, if things don't really ever wind up in my pocket, just because I, for some reason, it just doesn't do it for me. Um, and it sits in the safe, safe, it, it'll get sold, you know, uh, but everything that I have pretty much. Yeah. will will be carried and used. So as you ready your next knife, Jim, can you bring up Lindy Lou's, uh, last comment? Uh, if you handle it enough, it can fade. It yep. takes years. Heat anodization is much more durable and st than standard. I don't, and, and Lindy Lou is an expert at that. She does beautiful anna work. Uh, yeah, definitely check her out. Awesome. It's tough. It's it's a lot tougher, um, heat anodizing, because you're literally drawing colors out at high temperature versus um, basically using electro, you know, uh, Chemical. voltage, yeah. Yeah, chemicals and voltage to to alter the, you know, the look um of the surface of the metal. So it's, it, you know, the heating is a little bit of a deeper, you know, a deeper anodization practice, if you will. But yeah, to me, heat anodizing is a really cool thing uh, for sure. The oils do, like I said, impact it. It will fade over time, but it'll take a long time to do. And then you can always send it back into a maker as long as you're buying from a good reputable maker right. who can um, just reheat, you know, they can reheat and refinish the stuff. That's cool. So what did you have there? Was that a Terzuola I saw? Yeah, I figure you know you're talking about oh. classics, and um, you know I know that this is a modern interpretation of kind of a a classic looking folder, mm -hmm. but um, you know to me this is uh, this is just such a timeless and classic gent style piece. Um, so this is Bob Loveless designed, Bob Terzuola made piece. So Bob mm -hmm. went to Bob Terzola said, I don't make any folders. I'd really love for you to make me a folder. Um, and Bob <laughs> Terzola said, okay, I can do that for you. Um, I'll make a few of them. I'll give you one. I'll make me one and I'll give some to some friends. So he made six of them and it's Jeez, called, it's called the model six is the name of this. Um, and so you got one of them. So, well, this is the seventh model six ever made and there's only seven. So um, he did this one to pay homage to the original six Model 6s um, and made the seventh one for the Paris show about three years ago, I guess, four years ago. Mm -hmm. But he used all the materials that he had in his shop from when he made the original Model 6s. So even though it was put together later, it's still using 20-year-old vintage Westinghouse Micarta, mm -hmm. using the very first run of chad nichols damascus uh when chad nichols first started making damascus this was among his very oldest stuff that he ran uh, 24 karat gold uh thumb stud oh dude and um and then, you know he does a uh 
He doesn't like extra screws. Bob doesn't. So it has a screwless clip on it. That carbon fiber, um, kind of the, the cross cut. Usually you don't see a backspacer and two by two carbon fiber, but this one is kind of in that two by two carbon fiber. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's just an amazing. Dude, I love how the liners sit proud. She's the number seven. I love, uh, I love how the, they, they sit proud there. The, uh, the liners, um, when you when you look at it from the side, very and, traditional, yeah. And uh, if if you don't mind, can you, um, uh, Jim, can you go wide? And Ryan, can you hold the tip of the knife up to your camera? It, it uh, not like that. Just uh, just turn it sideways. That's what she said. And then and then look at that crazy swedge. God, it's a good look at the Damascus too, right? God. And and so you said this is a loveless design, but. Any day of the week, I'd look that look at this and know it's a, a Terzuola. A hundred percent. Yep. Wait, wait. Who who loved the wedge too? Someone else has excellent it's taste. Yeah. Everyone, well, yeah. God, that's gorgeous. Yeah. No, the wedge is awesome. The I mean, the the grinds for the wedge are really nice and even. Um, and yeah, he. I mean, this thing is. It's a performer too, but it feels like a Terzuola. Really, I mean, it, it truly does. But you could see the Bob, you know, that Bob Loveless old school kind of feel to this. And I love the little yeah. notch here where the thumb stud goes. Yeah. How, so, to, yeah. Hey, Southern Edge work, uh, Knife Works. It's nice to have you here, by the way. And yeah, damn is right. Uh, G Man W, beautiful. Tell me. I mean, also, it's Ryan. on Teflon. Um, Teflon is the pivot. And it's, I mean, this thing is just incredibly drop shutty. Nothing I, wrong with Teflon. Nothing yeah. wrong with Teflon. I have Think some awesome. Wrong with so, uh, 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 what was I going to ask you, man? Something on the tip of my tongue. Dag nabbit. Well, anyway, it'll come to me. But, uh, oh, I was going to say, how the hell do you get this knife? You got number seven out of six. How does that work? You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so um, when, you, when you get something like this, is seems like a major score to me. It's a, um, it's a ma this is a major score for, for me. And how and do you come my, about this knife? My collection. So, um, Man, it was, it, I think, pure. I don't know if you call it pure luck because I invest way too much of time. My wife would yeah. probably agree in, in trying to seek out some of my favorite maker stuff. And preparation Caleb, meets opportunity, Caleb, man. That's luck, right? So, yeah, maybe it is luck. So, Caleb, I agree 100%. Teflon is my favorite um, pivot mechanism, actually, um, followed closely by ceramic bearings over top of thrust washers. But Teflon, in my opinion, is the very best. PB, if phosphor bronze, if it's done right, can also be very good. But a lot of, you know, Teflon and phosphor bronze washers don't leave a whole lot of room for error for, mm -hmm. for makers, mm -hmm. right? You have to have your tolerances need to be tight. Your your quality needs to be good. Um, if you're going to have a blade that locks up properly without play and all that kind of stuff, if you're using tef Teflon or phosphor bronze, there's a little bit more room for error or margin for error if you're using bearings as your, you know, as your pivot mechanism. So I think Teflon for a lot of these guys and these old schoolers, first of all, they love using it because they, you know, they feel like it, it works the best, you know, it works through grit and grime and, and you know, you don't have to disassemble stuff with Teflon. You can hit it with some compressed air and it's already self lubricating, you know, all that kind of stuff. Wait, wait, um, what do you mean? It's self lubricating. I didn't know that about Teflon. Uh, Teflon is, is just naturally a self lubricating material. Oh. All right, like a so, Teflon pan is nonstick, kind of. Kind of, yeah. It it has lubricity uh, to it, just like just like ceramic bearings versus steel bearings. Mm -hmm. for, that ceramic has a lubricity, a self lubricating kind of quality to it, where it doesn't, it can't gall against other materials. Uh, Teflon is the same kind of way. Yeah, yeah uh, David, I am I am shocked and oh. outraged. <laughs> I'm <laughs> shocked and outraged. That's sitting in someone's basement right now. Who's Maybe playing video games and has no idea what his grandpa just gave him? So keep, uh, keep a really close eye talking about Terzuola um, fixed blades. Keep a really close eye because Bobby T just put on his Uncle Bobby T, I call <laughs> on his Instagram, just posted yes. doing some field grade yeah. versions of his fixed blades, which really harken back to you know what he used to do when he was in Guatemala and yes. these blades for you know these SF slash special operators, yeah, these CIA guys or whoever um, down in Guatemala, and they're awesome. And Bob actually went on his last um, 
he does these virtual knife shows with him and Susan and it, they're the cutest couple and you know, these old couples, but in a, in a shop slinging these badass knives. Right? <laughs> yeah. um, it's really bizarre, but also incredibly engaging and a lot of fun to watch. And he was showing us um, that he had a fixed blade that he used to take to old knife shows back in the day that he went out and he would shoot with a 45 caliber pistol, you know, and he'd use his, yeah, and he would split them and he would show his edges and any damage that would come from shooting it. And he would have that on display. And there was, you know, the way he grinds a little bit thicker on those field grade knives makes them really strong and great for combat use and, and you know, that kind of stuff. But, um, I don't, I don't know. I got off topic, but we were talking about something and I don't remember what now. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, I was asking how you actually came okay. to, to get number seven out of six. So um, this was friends of friends in the community through um, in Instagram. I'm mm -hmm. in a, a chat group and we talk knives all day long, you know, um, but it's a lot of folks that are very engaged in the hobby and, and, collectors like myself and we all just cut it up and talk about you know what's going on in the market who's coming out with what and it's just constant so um in that knife group friend of a friend basically you know said hey my buddy's looking to to move this and the guy's name on instagram is every dave carey who i got it from and um and i was really just fortunate and uh, he was offloading it and i was just like oh my god i'd be honored and then i actually was able to track down who the original purchaser was from Parrot. Mm -hmm who was, um, I, I don't know how you pronounce his name, but he's he's pretty well known in the YouTube and, and Instagram world, uh, Tzvi, T-Z-V-Y. Oh, yes, 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 he's a big time collector. Yeah. I, I, I followed him. Really uh, nice guy too. And I, I hit him up and he was the original owner of it and um, wanted to know a little bit more information on it. So I asked him and I asked Bob T to give me some feedback on what this was. They told me the story and said, you know, that's an incredible piece. and. V was, or I don't know how you pronounce it, but I'm just going to say it's V. Um, uh -huh. But he, uh, he was like, man, I don't know why I ever let that down. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, it's a gem and I'm not going to let it go. So mm -mm -mm. It's like Dave letting that, letting that uh, ter Terzuola Chris fixed blade that was yeah. gifted to him go, you don't let a gift knife go, Dave. Come on. Yeah, especially, I mean, and now to find out that you had something really cool and like, really, that's a hard, uh, that's a hard pill to swallow. So I feel bad for him, but um, yeah. Well, who, who hasn't done that though? Hey, Cameron, we've all, we've all done that. <laughs> Good to see you, sir. With that, I'm going to pop off of here. All happy, righty, my man. Happy Thursday night knives, everybody. Happy Thursday night knives to you, sir. And I'll catch up with you next Thursday. All righty, Ryan. Take care, man. Yep. See you, everybody. All right. Matthew says, would a Teflon blade coating improve its ability to pierce armor like a Teflon coated bullet to body armor? I don't know. That's an interesting thought. That's an interesting thought. I, I do know that Teflon in pans is bad for birds. So if you have a pet bird, you're not supposed to have Teflon pans. I guess it off gases something that is, uh, is uh, toxic to them. Then again, I had a friend who had an obnoxious bird and... Uh, um, she used Teflon pans, and unfortunately, it didn't work on that bird. Uh, the birds can be very, very, uh, what do you call it, territorial, especially if it's a male bird, and then there are, you know, female owners. Man. Uh, so anyway, I wanted to talk about a couple new knives that are coming out that are slip joints. Since we're on the slip joint tip, I get my Gerber 1971 cat's tongue out. 1971, the year of my birth. Yes, that's right. The Gerber 71 cat's tongue. What is that? I'm interested. And you let it go. I know Gerber in the 70s was awesome. I remember a uh, uh, a sort of um, 110-esque Gerber that my dad had that was up on a shelf that I could just barely reach. And then I'd reach it. You know, when I was old enough to reach it, I'd pull it down and open it up and play with it. And then my dad used a uh, wheel bench grinder once to sharpen it and... Uh, Dad, if you're watching, it didn't go well, but that, you know, I, I, I applaud the, I applaud the, the effort sharpening knives, is, sharpening knives is, is a, is a, well, it takes some time. And, and then when you bring machines into it, man, yeah, you, you don't want to, you don't want to try on your sweet old Gerber first, but you know, we live and we learn. <laughs> I know, I know I, I, yeah, whatever. I'll stop right there. So the beer and sausage knife from GEC. So 
this is something I saw on uh, on Knife News and was very excited to see. It's coming out soon, and it's in the which which number is that? Uh, it's in the pattern the thirty, I think it is. No, the thirty five. So the thirty five uh, uh, has come out in two different iterations: the calf pen jack and the Churchill. The Churchill man, I labored over getting a Churchill for a long time, never did, now I wish I did. It was this with a clip point on one side and one of those beautiful long uh, pen blades like on the gun stock uh, on the other side. And um, I think they call this a cigar pattern because it's, uh, you know, well, cigar shaped and even and straight. So each side is the same width and it's fully straight as opposed to like a dog leg, which will take a curve or something that has a, a thinner tip, you know, like, uh, like you look at this number 38 and, uh, sometimes you'll see it like this where the blade comes out on this side. And then in other iterations of this, I think they made a whittler of this where, you know, blades come out here too. And so, I mean, you can change it up, but that, uh, but the new beer and sausage knife is in that totally even kind of cigar pattern. And uh, look at this thing. It's got a cool drop point blade on one side. And, uh, you know, it's all 1095. And it's it looks like it's pretty big, 3.75 close uh, in the close position. Um, but look at the other side. Obviously, that's the 800-pound the gorilla in the room. It has a beard comb for all you hipsters and uh, a beard refuse removal device. <laughs> and uh, and then it has uh, tier ones in, uh, and then it has a fork also for when you cut your sausage with the one side, you close the blade, you get out your fork. Uh, I mean, how cool is that? This is this is the perfect summer beer garden knife. Uh, I used to live in Brooklyn, and there was a cool place. I don't know if it's still there. I haven't been there in years now. It was called Radagast, and it was a German beer hall, and it was in a cool old space, you know, and. Uh, and you just sit down at these giant Valhalla-like tables, and they bring you beer in big steins. And then if you're hungry, you get up, you walk to fire, grill in back, and get sausage. And this would be perfect for that. Sit down with a sausage, casually having your conversation, pull out the knife, cut it, use the fork. Never mention it, but people are looking at you like, man, who is this guy? How cool can you get a number 35 titty you cutlery beer and sausage knife? Cool. That's how cool you can get fork and right says tier one. So shortly uh, as, as winter comes in, I will be growing out my beard and this, that will be the great greatest excuse uh, for me to jump into this knife. Plus I, I, uh, I, I, what do you call it? Not welched. I, uh, I hesitated on the Churchill and regretted it. So now they're coming out with another 35. I should jump on it. Kind of a moral imperative. Uh, also 1095 steel as usual. And uh, not for nothing, but I hope they come out with the uh, autumn jig bone uh, version of that. Cause you know, it would be so cool to have it look just like that. Love that. Uh, second little uh, knife drop news item is also a slip joint. So it was kind of fortuitous that we uh, that we uh, didn't have time for traditionals last week because over this past week, these two, uh, these two knives were announced. The second one is a real steel. It is on the other end. Instead of being a currently contemporarily, contemporaneously, currently produced knife uh, using old school materials and old school design, this is a currently... Uh, produced knife using new school. Uh, you know, it's G10 and it's D2 and they're coming out with the light version. And apparently light is referring not to the weight, but to the cost uh, because, uh, uh, well, because it's a little bit smaller, I guess, than the older one. And, uh, and it doesn't have the micarta or the carbon fiber. You know, it's a little bit cheaper in the material side of things. Um, so this is also a slip joint. Obviously, uh, this uh, doesn't look like one. It's a. I think this comes from Poltergeist Works. Yeah, comes from Poltergeist Works. Uh, Jacob, whose last name I don't know how to pronounce, uh, custom knife maker from Poland who makes really uh, beautiful, cool, compelling, modern-looking uh, takes of uh, folding knives. And uh, Real Steel makes a number of them in a pr in production form. And uh, well, the Luna line, which this is a part of, is uh, the slip joint version. 
of these knives. And so that's this, and it's light. It's light in cost, light in pocket, I would imagine. What do you guys think of these knives, these modern traditionals, the black and white one in G10 at Knife Center exclusive, under 60 bucks? Oh, that's not bad. Uh, what do you think of them? Do you like these modern, uh, like, okay, so oh, they also came out with, I'm sorry, uh, to, before we launch into the philosophy, the, the deep and philosophical conversation about this, what I want to know, or what I want to say is this, and that is that, uh, oh, that's interesting. I didn't, I didn't notice that. But anyway, uh, they came out with a second version of this that locks. And now I'm like, all right, I don't know. I don't know. So it's a, it's, it's a line of slip joint traditionals that are made with modern materials and look modern. And now it's got a lock on it too. So it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like transitioning to another sex, but then uh, kind of going after the sex you would have gone after if you hadn't transitioned, something like that. Um, it's, it's kind of weird to have a slip joint line and then, you know, have it be exclusively slip joint and have it be kind of the USP of the whole thing, and then to introduce a lock. It's kind of like, well, you make a million other knives with locks, and several of them made by Poltergeist Works, so why muddy the waters? Anyway, my point is, do we like traditional, modern traditionals, or do we not? Um, I don't know. I go back and forth. But I will tell you this. I have a Benchmade proper that's been in pieces over on my workbench, for months now. And uh, I took it apart. I tried to dye the scales. That didn't work. I didn't buy the right dye. And then I just, man, that knife never really captured me. And I was trying to save it by dyeing the, the red scales. And and then when that didn't work, I was like, yeah, I could put it together. <laughs> I could put it back together. But I just haven't yet. And I think it's because I never carry it. I'm not compelled by the by the proper. I'm not so sure I'm on board with the modern traditionals. Lavender Pants says, the modern traditionals I like are more modern, like what Pena is doing, or Rustic Gent. Yes, the Rustic Gent, gorgeous knife. I love that. The Boker Genius or the QSP Worker. QSP Worker is an interesting one, too. Yeah. Like the Fracture, it's basically a tactical slip joint. The Fracture. Which one is the Fracture? It'll come to me. Well, no, it won't, but uh, I'll look it up. Cameron says, when you can, Bob, check out Swan Knives, Nicholas Swan. He makes contemporary slip joints as well as some locking folders. He also puts pull tabs, which are popular with EDC folks. Pull tabs. Pull tabs. Pull tabs on the blade so that you can pull it open easily. I will definitely check him out. I feel like I've seen him or maybe I follow him on Instagram. I like modern traditionals that look traditional, but with modern materials like the proper or the best man. Best man, I, I, I like what Lion Steel is doing. I love this. I don't know if you've seen this, of course. You have the Gitano. Uh, this is a great, great knife. And this is a slip joint and uh, very, very, very stoutly sprung. Ooh, almost took my finger off there. But a very stoutly sprung slip joint. And it's got the clip, which is very handy. And uh, thrill and rustic gent. And... Uh, beautiful olive wood. You can get it in a number of different handle scales. I do like this, and I imagine I would like the uh, all the other slip joints they've been making. Uh, even though sometimes they look a little bit clunky, and I know they're like supposed to look modern and kind of squared off, and it's cool design, uh, but that is sleek. Love it. Now, what do we have here? Nick Swan Knot. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's see. Oh, I like that little uh, the one in the middle top. Yeah. Oh, that's cute. I'm sorry. That's badass in a small way. Uh, let's see the, uh, Jim, if you don't mind, let's see the, the three shot in the middle on the left with the blue knife in the center, right below that one. Yeah. Nice looking stuff. That little black one next to the blue and the, and the, uh, and the, and the grind on the blue one looks pretty sweet too. Nice. I'll definitely have to check him out check him out further. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. And and then we have uh, our friends over at TRM who are making non-locking knives and, and they're very cool too. I, I just, something though, like the Gitano, 
I would carry this all the time if it had a lock. This this would literally be, you know, if they made a larger, if they made this in four a four inch version with a lock, oh my god, it would not leave my pocket. Can't, well, it would leave my pocket only to be played with. Kane says on the higher end side, but Arno Bertrand or Bernard, sorry, Arno Bernard, South African maker, does a sweet semi modern slippy called the Ring Calls. Ring Calls. Hmm. Definitely have to check him out. I'm going to have to go through the comments of this show tonight uh, to check out all these uh, suggestions. I just ordered a lion's deal dom in ram's horn. Yes, there's sheep's foot barlow. I've got a Boker Castlewood barlow coming also. Castlewood. Interesting. Um, I do like the lion's steel dom. I love the shape of that blade. It reminds me a lot of the uh, of the GEC Um uh, what is this? A sheep's foot? Warren clip? What is this? Sheep's foot, I guess. Uh, it's similar. The Dom. That's a really nice. That's actually one of the ones uh, and their clip. You know, I, I think maybe when I get back into traditionals, I'm, I'm not frankly in a traditional phase. I feel myself slipping, slipping ever so precipitously into a fixed blade phase because uh man i just i found myself I, I don't even know how this happened you know they say they don't really know where thoughts come from like how do you pre-think a thought you don't think i'm gonna have a deep thought i'm gonna have a thought i'm gonna have a craving thought about a knife i want that that does not happen we do not pre-think our thoughts so how do thoughts come to us do they come to us from elsewhere uh are they divine are they um you know uh, packages of downloaded information from aliens. I don't know. But what I do know is that I've been having this idea that I need to get a Shining Mountain Bowie from, from Bark River Knives because I love this V44 that I just got. And I feel like it's lonely and it needs a stable mate. Something equally, equally business-like, but maybe a little more hefty and larger for things that this can't quite handle, you know? So where does that little idea come from? Hmm? Tell me that. Bob, I'll send you the Asher Knives Modern Traditional Monday along with a couple of others. Thank you, Tier 1. I appreciate that greatly, actually. That will be awesome. I'd love to see that. Uh, Asher Knives, someone I keep hearing about, is someone I want to reach out to and, and talk to. The Lion Steel Best Man is a good one as well. Now, the Best Man is the one with the clip point, I think. And that is a nice-looking clip point. Cameron says, while you look up these awesome makers of slip joints, be sure to look at Chris Taylor of Taylor Made Knives. Yeah, Taylor Made Knives. Pretty sure I pretty sure I follow them to him too. Southern Edge, that Boker Castle collection is on point. Hmm, okay. Gonna have to look that up too. Uh, speaking of Boker and slip joints, check out this honey. I got this a long time ago. Well, several years back now on uh, on the old blade forums. But look at that. Beautiful old, old Boker. I know it says 2020 on it, but that's not the year. That's not the year it was made. Tree brand. And uh, what's cool, I, I like this hunter pattern. Uh, this is a traditional, uh, you know, pattern. It's got, now if anyone knows what the, what the different use for these blades are, I was assuming that this, one of them has to do with skinning, but neither of them look like particularly good skinning knives, though I'm not a uh, skinner. I'm not a, a hunter and I've never, skinned an animal before i guess maybe the clip point looks more like a skinner to me but anyway an interesting pattern i love this boker i'm interested to see what that castle line is all about phony says uh if my thoughts come from a higher power then god loves knives. <laughs> yeah and he has a sixth sense of humor someone does I, I i wouldn't be so quick to assume that it's god bony i mean but hey uh just greg says i need to get myself a big bowie like that but I want one with a sheath slim enough I can slip it into my waistband like the glorious Lynn Thompson. Well, look at this, man. Look at this. So uh, if you take the frog off, there's a beautiful, by the way, man, these leather sheets, leather sheaths that come with Bark River knives are just insanely gorgeous, beautifully made. And the bigger ones have frogs. So this has a, a leather thing that slips over here and engages. Oh, there's a little notch that that engages with this, stopping the frog from moving all the way up. The frog is the piece that connects it to the belt. It's like a big leather piece. It's over in my cabinet. I don't want to get it right now, but it has the belt loop on it. You take that off, and here you go, man. Slip it right in your pants, and uh, you know your belt will stop it there. 
You just put your, your shirt over it. I mean, Lynn Thompson is a man of ample carriage and he's able to hide a, a Bowie knife in there. So, I mean, I think, I think we can all manage it if it's important enough to us. And it should be. Uh, Kane says, Cameron Kyle TaylorMade is legit. I want to get one of his Nessie models. Ooh, is that a folding Nesmuk? Do tell. That would be cool. Uh, Matthew Lee says, I'm still stuck in a fixed blade phase. Unfortunately, here in New Zealand, we are kind of limited to whatever the importer imports. Huh. Do they import tops knives, Matthew? I'm thinking of getting rid of perhaps a tops knife if, knife, if you're interested. Look at me. Shameless. Shameless. Sorry, I forget I said that. But if you're interested in a, uh, a, a tops Cut 4.0 that's gotten very little use, let me know. I send it anywhere. I ship anywhere except New Zealand. Just kidding. Uh, next Patreon knife giveaway on September 17th. I would be remiss if I did not mention that. And we will be giving away one of two knives donated to the channel by Stu of Stone and Steel, our good friend up in Vermont. He is a great guy in law enforcement and sells knives at knife shows around New England. And uh, uh, I got, uh, I, he's, donated a couple of knives to me and then i bought a couple of knives from him and uh he's a great guy and uh so for the town hall for the first town hall he donated a super cqc7 from emerson we auctioned that off and then um just without without any sort of solicitation uh i get a package from him with a really really cool tops uh, uh punch dagger that weighs about 10 pounds and a, uh, a, the new SOG XR Pentagon, and uh, both really great knives and, and pretty, you know, uh, generous gifts. Let me just say that, generous gifts. Uh, and so next month, it will be the SOG XR, which, by the way, uh, I've always been a fan of the XR Pentagon. I'm sorry, that's what it is, the SOG XR Pentagon. I've always been a fan of the Pentagon uh, knife, even when they went through their dark period of over billboarding and cheap materials and big box stores and all that, uh, they were still making the Pentagon and some of their uh, uh, legacy models. And uh, the Pentagon was always a cool one, and it's still sweet. And something I really like about the folding version uh, of the Pentagon is that, uh, you know, it's a dagger shaped blade, but it being a folder, like most dagger shaped bladed folders, it is single edged. But at the very tip, the first quarter inch is sharp on the top side, and that nestles nicely into the handle so you don't cut yourself, but it gives you that extra penetration uh, if you need to stab through something. Also, uh, not for nothing, but it, it gives you a little a little, uh, little bit of something to cut with if you happen to be in this sort of situation. Uh, so useful and, and cool. So we will be giving that away on September 17th to Patreon members who are at the $10 level. That's called the Gentleman Junkie level. And that refers to the gentleman style of knife, not that it has to be a man. If you are a woman, you can also be a, a gentleman junkie, maybe a gentlewoman junkie. Uh, the middle tier for five bucks a month is traditional, or no, is the tactical junkie. And then the traditional junkie is three bucks a month. And they have uh, uh, various... Um, perks like you get to see the podcast early and that kind of thing uh but at the ten dollar level we have this knife giveaway so uh i was going to have a little bit of a knife fight anyone want to come on and have a knife fight you have something on the way right now from me bob yes i love that i love that thank you it's so, it's so cool thank you lavender pants uh it's always so cool knowing you have something on the way and i've been loving uh since Thursday Night Knives and since doing uh, the podcast and stuff, people have been sending me knives to borrow and check out, and I've become a, a member of the uh, Apex Pass Around group, thanks to Blade Banter, David, and uh, and I have a chance to have knives come through here, but not stay here, which is so nice. Um, you know, I, I've, I can just take them. It's like being an uncle. Take them in, play with them. Ah, this is fun. This is cool. This is great. And then when you're done with it, you just send it back off. You don't have to worry about selling it. You don't have to worry about the guilt of, ah, I never carry this, but I wanted to check it out. And uh, so there we go. Anyone want to come in and debate? Uh, I actually want to do a knife fight on uh, modern traditionals versus traditional traditionals. And uh, if someone wants to come on, I'm ready to go. Come on. Come on. Uh, but uh, 
If it doesn't happen this week, it will happen sometime because, damn it, Apex Pass Round Group is amazing. I agree with you, sir. Uh, I want to talk about this because I have some opinions. What do you think? Anyone? Any takers? Any ta I'm not going to sit here all night and Bueller, Bueller, you. Uh, so, oh, there's something I wanted to mention. Incidentally, it's totally incidental. And uh, I'll, I'll talk about this while maybe someone comes and signs on. But something very interesting happened today uh, at work. I was shooting a piece about uh, a little newsy thing about uh, some some two new public sculptures that were installed in a uh, in a in the complex of a very powerful bank that's close by here. You know, they have a whole big campus uh, with all sorts of buildings and different amenities for not only for the bank itself but for the community. And one of the things is a little park with a sculpture garden and. Uh, and so I was interviewing this guy who curated uh, this and picked the sculptures and everything. And they're these, they were big. Um, I'd say, oh, we'll see. One was about seven feet tall, uh, a couple thousand pounds. The other one was like shorter and rounder. And But they looked kind of like, they, they kind of were reminiscent of um, artichokes. They kind of, they were organic and, and, and had lots of different um, sort of plates and it was uh, in granite, and they were beautifully labored over works. And I talked, I was talking to the guy about about these sculptures, and he said, "Oh, oh, this artist um, designs all of his sculptures in CAD, and then he he sends the design to China, uh, and they and they CNC cut it out for him there." And I'm like, "You're kidding me!" And he's like, "Yeah." And then they send the sculpture back. You know, it's it's really cheap sending like. Uh, 12,000 pounds of granite from China, but they, they send the sculptures back. And then he has a team uh, uh, of, of young artists in his atelier that polish it and do all the final work, you know, and it's the funniest damn thing. It's exactly like the knife world. I was like, I was shocked to hear that. I went to art school, uh, but I went to art school in a time before, before computers. Well, this was definitely like uh, before the internet. I remember there were so, there were a couple of crazy kids who were taking computer design and sh and stuff like that. But uh, uh, this this was before you know all this stuff. So the the idea of a CAD designed fine art sculpture that was going to be designed here and produced in China on CNC machines was a totally foreign concept to me. Fine art is made with the hands, and it's you know, but like everything else, I you know I. I I can't stay moored in the 20th century and and before I have to move on. And and these were beautiful sculptures, but I must admit, hey, Alex, good to see you, man. I must admit that once I found that out, this much, I mean, not too much, but just this much less, I don't know. I was just kind of like, because when I showed up to the spot, I was like, God, those things are beautiful. They must have taken forever. And then I realized, oh, he, he did it in CAD and... Hey, don't get me wrong. I know that there is a whole universe of, of artistry that goes into designing things on CAD, believe me. And then and then you're taking something uh, like fine art, which has no, you know, you can't really compare it to anything. You don't know if you're doing it right or wrong. You're just expressing yourself, you know, and and it's gotta be uh, it's gotta be relevant and good and 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 that kind of thing. But to see a piece like that that was so complex. I really wanted to know that hands labored over it. And uh, well, it was interesting to find out. So the fine art sculpture world is just like the knife world. You can design it in CAD, send the file to China. They will cut it out on their CNC machines and send it back to you for you to polish up, fix up and to sell to the end user. So pretty interesting, man. Pretty interesting. It made me wonder uh, if that's how paintings are now made. Because there are companies that you can, like companies that you can... Uh, uh, commission paintings from so anyway maybe one of them will advertise on this show at some point because uh, i hear them on other shows well i see no takers for my uh for knife fight tonight which was traditional traditionals versus uh modern traditionals uh, richard says the beat goes on or a night of dueling banjos art school wait the beat goes on or a night of dueling banjos and art school Yes, art school. I don't get the first one. You know what? Sometimes when I'm reading things on the run, on the go like this, I don't get it. Uh, hey, Mike, how you doing? Bob, I'm sending you a text in a minute. Excellent, sir. Excellent. I saw that uh, 
I saw that uh, Jeff over uh, at uh, Cutlery Lover showed the stonefish for a quick hot second. Uh, he didn't want to spoil it, but uh, he did his, one of his EDC updates. I love his EDC updates where he shows his pocket dump. That guy carries so much stuff in his pocket. I, I'm jealous because that would drive me absolutely up a wall. Uh, but uh, he's a huge fan of the neck knives, and uh, and he he showed that he's been carrying that, and he's going to do more on it later. But he really liked it, so not surprised. Not surprised. That's an awesome knife. Hey, Alex, how you doing, man? Oh man, uh, good. How are you guys? <laughs> What's, doing great. What's going on with you, sir? Uh, um, you know, just got home from work. Uh, um, you know, fed girl. I'm on, and then, then I hopped on just to see if I could catch a little bit of your show. Cool, man. Cool. Well, we were about to wrap up. Yeah, you're you're coming in very spotty. You're coming in uh, every couple of every couple of syllables. I'm hearing. This will make it easy if you if you choose to do a knife fight. <laughs> It's like, well, since he could only say every fifth syllable, I win, clearly. So let's see if Alex comes back on, and uh, and we'll do a little knife fight, and then uh, and then I think we'll dip. Um, the, where is it? Let me show you something. Where is it? Where is it? Ah. So I just unearthed this cool knife. I have an old... Uh, uh, an old pistol uh, case that I was getting rid of, and I forgot at the bottom of it, I always kept this. This is one of these little K-Bar TDIs, and I think when they when they created this, it was during a period where where, where knives were being um, marketed as gun retention devices. It's like if you're a cop or you're a excuse me, if you're a law enforcement officer of some sort and someone's reaching for your gun, well, this is the knife that you use to cut the hand that's reaching for the gun or this is the knife you use in defense uh, if someone's going for your gun. And and I think that that's why they created it in that shape, uh, even though it's extremely useful. Like, in, in other words, um, people who are used to training with guns would index it and kind of feel that pistol grip and intuitively kind of know how to use it or where to point it. Uh, but that, or at least that's what I always assumed because they marketed it originally as like a, for that, that purpose. But, uh, after pulling it back out of that case and, and, and using it a little bit and not using it, just whipping it around a little bit, it is like a mini, uh, uh, Kukri. I mean, right there, you have, you have, uh, you have the curve you need, you have the accelerated cut you need, uh, with, with, with little effort and not for nothing. This would make an awesome utility knife. This would make a great, you work in a warehouse utility knife. This and something like this in a Warncliffe would be just super awesome. Super awesome, bro. Sorry, my phone's dead. That's quite all right, Alex. I'm about dead uh, for the evening. Uh, for the evening, that is. So I'm going to sign off here in a minute. Uh, I'm just looking around. Want to make sure that I don't have uh, any anything else I want to. One, one more thing. One more thing. And I want to talk just for a, a brief second about open L's. Now, someone said in the, uh, in the comments on my, on my uh, video for the traditional knives that the open L with the broken tip would, would make a great Tanto or is, 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 you know, prime candidate for the Tanto uh, treatment. And I think he was referring to this, but that's not a broken tip. Actually, I did that on purpose. I wanted something that looked kind of like a straight razor. Um, when I did this open L's, man, they are fun to mess with because you cannot mess them up. They're eight bucks or 10 bucks or whatever, 15 bucks, you know, you get this, you change the handle, you do it. Let me show you my, this is pretty much my dedicated steak knife. Okay. If we're going somewhere fancy, I'll, I'll bring the, I'll bring the GEC Hogan with the beautiful, Oh God, tortoise shell. But, just your your average. We're just going out. This is what I always bring. This is an, an open L number ten. Is it open L or open L? I've started saying open L. This is a number ten, which is larger than the one. Yeah, the number eight is the eponymous. That's the one that everyone has. Everyone has the number eight. That's this size. 
Uh, the number 10 is the step up, and I really like the size. And uh, and so I did a little bit of a – so this one is the 10. The first one was the 8, tier 1. But I just did a little – what is that? Is it like an Anzo or a rock pattern or something? Just kind of filed it. I used my, uh, my flex shaft, I think. And then uh, put some – couple of different layers of different stains on there and it's sort of a work in progress. It's super sharp and uh, it's just a great steak knife. I mean, this is an outstanding steak knife. And like I said, you don't have to pick up that nasty thing they hand you and call a knife. Chow junkie. <laughs> yeah, right here. Right here, baby. I need an open L in my life. <laughs> it's a shame I don't own one. We'll fix that this week. Edwin, you should. I'm ashamed. Frankly, you should be ashamed of yourself. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, there, there are a couple of knives, though, that you should have. One of them is this, and I know you have a beautiful collection, Edwin, of 110s. 110 is one you should have in your life for sure, everyone. What was that, Lavender Pants, uh, before we sign off? See Walter Wells. Oh, uh, I've only ever had a number seven. Puny, puny number seven. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, check out the 10. G-Man W. Thank you guys for all you do. My pleasure, G-Man, and Jim's pleasure. I think I speak for Jim when I say Jim's pleasure. We have a lot of fun doing this. Hey, guys, sorry I'm late. Dirk, hey, sorry we're about to go, man. <laughs> uh, so we've been talking traditionals, and uh, Dirk, actually, I'd, I'd be interested to know if you have any traditionals. I know you have a sprawling and outstanding collection of cool and unique modern knives. Do you have any, do you have any traditionals? Modern traditionals, traditional traditionals? I'd be interested to know. And uh, if you don't, I have a couple of here that you might want to check out. So let me know, sir. All right. Well, I think that brings us to the conclusion of this Thursday Night Knives. Uh, I want to thank Jim, as always, who's sitting back there kicking butt on the uh, switcher. He's not back there, actually. He's over there, uh, 15, no, about 20 miles in that direction. Um but he's down in his basement as I am in mine. So uh, thank you, Jim. Have a great, great weekend yourself, Caleb. Uh, it's going to be replete with lawn work. Dirk, no real traditionals, actually, but would love to check some out. All right, cool. Uh, let's talk. I have a couple uh, GECs here that you might, you might find cool. All right, you too, sir. All right, so everyone, <laughs> uh, so for, uh, for Jim behind the switcher, I'm Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco saying don't take Dolph for an answer, and thank you for watching.